going to listen. How can you wait that long? How can you wait? Sean O'Malley, the bantamweight champion of the goddamn mother world. Yes, what sir. I'm, up, having, I'm having a bit of a hair day. You're so. always having a hair day. You're looking good, man. You're looking good. Oh, yeah. This is the champ doing what he wants nowadays. That, that's what I was going to say. The champ can do whatever he wants, and it looks cool. Man, congratulations, Sean. Congratulations. I mean, what else to say? Just, just, just spectacular. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bisbing. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a hell of a few weeks. Oh, I bet it has. What, what has the celebrations been like? I mean, were, yeah, right have you done like right, the tour? Uh, the UFC had you touring around yet? Um, I've, a little bit. I right after the fight, we didn't party. We gave it a. Uh, just because the fight got over so late in Boston um, mm. and there was really nothing to do. So we didn't do anything that night, didn't do anything that week. And then we had a proper celebration with the boys that weekend in Scottsdale. Um, and then uh, I was just in Vegas Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I accidentally went out every night and uh, had a hell of a time. As you do, and rightly so. But this is where his life's going to get interesting for you now. I mean, you've always been massively popular, and we'll get to what's next and all the rest of it. But, you know, I mean, we just had Brendan Allen on the podcast a minute ago, and he was talking about, you know, self-affirmation, self-confidence, working with sports psychologists and all the rest of it. You're a guy that's always showed that mental strength right from day one. Right? And you've always believed in yourself, but of course, behind the scenes, working your ass off, you know, but you, you've, it's a, it's, it's kind of a cliche term these days, manifested this reality. Would you agree with that or yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I definitely have all, um, I, I think manifest, yeah, that is kind of a cheesy word or whatever, but yeah. it is literally yeah. like how my life, I mean, what, what's played out so far is literally what I seen as a 16, 17 year old kid wanting to you know be great wanting to do big things and that's just you know i've seen it all in my head play out before it all happened so now that it's all here you know it feels amazing but it's just like i i I feel like i truly knew this was all going to happen i had it such a deep belief that it was all going to happen and i do think that played a huge role you know in, in it happening obviously having that that deep belief without working hard doesn't really equal that so you know, I've, I've obviously put in the work and, uh, but yeah, I think there's a huge part that manifesting plays in, mm. in all of it. And, and and when you were saying when you were younger, you wanted to always wanted to be someone, you know, be someone famous or whatever. Was it always in the fight game or was there something else you were thinking about? No, I, the first dream I had was being in the NFL. That was like the first dream I had and the first goal, you know, in fifth, sixth, seventh grade eighth grade and then you know you got into high school and you realized all right i'm still pretty small that ain't realistic <laughs> um i was waiting for my waiting to hit six six never quite happened we're, yeah, we're waiting no, my, for those gro- growth spurts yeah it never happened which worked out good because i'd rather fight these little 35ers than be a big bastard and fight those big guys so um yeah i, I my first dream first goals were, were being the nfl realized that wasn't going to happen i was like man i didn't and at this time, I was, I didn't, I've never even heard of fighting. Like, I never watched kickboxing, never watched them. I watched UFC, went and tried kickboxing when I was 16. I was like, this could be it. I was naturally just athletic and pretty much had a very similar style as I do now. I just, you know, I'm, try, I'm mastering it and getting better at the style that I had when I was 16, a young buck, and just getting more tools and, and, and tightening up everything that I had yeah. then. Well, uh, and as we know, or as they say, and the rest is history because the Sugar Sean era is here. I mean, right, listen, Aljamain Sterling, that was a tough fight on paper. I mean, it wasn't for you on the night. You breezed it. You made it look easy. And what a spectacular knockout. But when you look at Aljamain, you know, the resume before sat- last Saturday or whenever it was two weeks ago, the greatest bantamweight we've seen, right, going on a crazy run, stopping people, uh, the competition that he's beaten, on paper, it looked like a really, really tough fight. But you walked in there cool as a cucumber <laughs> and you made him, and I said, I like Al Jermaine, so I'm going to choose my words carefully. You made him look kind of average. And then that that knockout shot, that right hand that you landed, I mean, just talk me through that moment, how it felt. And yeah, just just yeah, just yeah, just tell everyone how that feels. Yeah, going into all my fights, I know I'm capable of making whoever I fight look bad. Whether they're really good or not, I'm capable of making people look bad. And I think that comes from 
my speed. I have always, I always attribute my speed to my success. I've Aljamain Sterling was not expecting me to be as fast as I was. He literally, and it drives me crazy when people are like, why didn't he wrestle? Why didn't he try to wrestle? I'm standing about 42 feet away from you and still being able to hit you. And these guys can't, can't get in on me. It's not as easy as just trying to grab my leg. Um, you know, so people that were like, why didn't you try to wrestle more? He couldn't. That was a 100% it was his goal. It was no secret with what our game plans were. I executed mine better. Um, and even when he did get me up against the fence, I out-wrestled him in a sense. Mm. He was, you know, he, he couldn't take me down. And I'll teach Henry whatever he wants to know because he took Henry down four times. Um, yeah. There's just levels to wrestling, and I'm above Henry, statistically speaking, against Al um, so, you're, so if Henry, you're you're the gold medalist now. Yeah, I mean, you I got a gold well belt, but, but, but now you, <laughs> you, you have Sahudo's gold medal as well. Yeah, he just, it just, that little dude gets so fired up. Just the fact that Aljo couldn't take me down. I know Henry watches it and just gets so mad. But yeah, the moment itself felt, felt like a movie. A lot, of, like a lot of the ways my careers have played out, like even knocking out Alfred, Snoop Dogg going crazy, that felt like a movie. Um, you know, coming back after a two year layoff, beating Jose Quinones, that was a powerful moment. Um, but yeah, this one, obviously with Dana wrapping the belt around, around my waist and knocking out Aljamain, like it was, I knocked out the best dude in the division, the best dude that's ever fought in that weight class. I, I put him to sleep in two rounds. And, uh, so there, there's a, I was very, very confident before this fight in my skills and my abilities, but now it's just like, I need to be humble. This is getting out of hand, Michael Bisbee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're never going to change and, and don't change a goddamn thing i yeah. always say what a great guy you are you're very very confident but rather goddamn so do you know what was so impressive sean because yeah al Jermaine, we know about the wrestling threat and he did out wrestle Sahudo, and that's why i thought you know stylistically on paper this is going to be really tough for you because and i've i speak about this all the time on commentary but when you know someone's just trying to wrestle it causes one your yourself to clam up and not yeah. let go because you're like, as soon as I throw they're gonna shoot underneath me you know and that, that always riddled me with anxiety you know what mm -hmm. I mean but you didn't feel that at all no I I, I knew and I remember I think it was with John Anik when you have the fighter meetings before the fight not interviews not on camera he said like like how, what's your game plan kind of going into this fight what's your plan I said the first round will probably be boring I'm going to frustrate him and he will make a mistake first. And that's pretty much what happened. Even though I did make a mistake when I fell on my butt, I threw a teep, just came off my, came off my foot a little. I'm, I'm so fast that that happens. You know, when a car spins out at first, that's kind of what I threw a kick, fell. He got me into, up against the fence. I hit a beautiful, you know, little escape. And then uh, he lunged in, made the, made the mistake first. And, but yeah, I, I, I knew going into the, the fight, like, it, there's a possibility it could be – I'm not going to just go in there and recklessly engage and try to knock him out. I'm going to wait for my shot. I'm going to pick my shot, and I'm going to make that that shot count. And, uh, you know, I didn't hit him too much, but I hit him enough to, to, to change the fight. Well, that right hand, I mean, that was pretty powerful if you ask me. I mean, it face-planted him, right, pretty much? Face-planted him. This documentary crew has been following me around even before the fight. It's going to be a fucking crazy documentary. I think it's more so with like Dana and Hunter and business side of things, but they're following around a few fighters, and I was one of the fighters before the fight, um, you know, during fight week and then after the fight a little bit. But, you know, they, they showed me a slow-mo up front footage of me hammer-fisting him when he was on the ground, and like, you could see him like go out and like come back. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think anyone will ever, um, argue the stoppage again, once this footage comes out, I know he's saying he was fine and stuff, but he wasn't saying it that night, you know, he wasn't really arguing about it after, no. right after the fight. I think once a couple of weeks go by, it's easier to say like, well, I would, but I mean, in reality, it's like, what was he going to, you know, I mean, I wasn't going to stop punching him, let him up and no. let him recover. Um, so I think once that footage comes out, which won't probably won't be until next year, no one will really argue that, um, but yeah, the, the whole documentary is going to be crazy because they were following me before the fight, all fight week. It, it's going to be a really cool uh, footage. Yeah, the, listen, he, he never contested the stoppage. And I don't think that's a narrative that's really gaining any traction. I mean, you dropped right. him fair and square. You followed up with about 15 vicious punches. You know, yeah, kudos to him for being a tough son of a bitch. You know what I mean? He was still awake. Yeah. 
he wasn't unconscious, but you know, this is he was getting the shit kicked out of him, let's be honest. Um, you've always seemed to do financially very, very well. I haven't looked at your bank balance, but judging by the fleet of cars that you own and the lifestyle that you live, now you're the champion of the goddamn world and you're a massive draw, Sean. Are you I gotta got say or I, I gotta suspect you're pretty excited about the future. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong about that. I, I feel like, and, and that's what's made this transition from not being champ to champ feel like nothing different, really, because I was making a lot of money, even in the UFC, but outside of the UFC, before mm. being champ. I'm pretty sure I had a Lamborghini before I was even top 15. You know, that's not, uh, you know, not a lot of people can say that. So, no. I, uh, yeah. I, 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 I still I, can't say it. How the <laughs> fuck are you driving a Lamborghini, bro? <laughs> uh, I could buy I one if to. I wanted to. Of course, of course. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been good. The money, you know, everything pay-per-view points next fight is, is very exciting. Um, that, and then that, and that has a lot of reason why I want to fight Cheeto too. It's like, you look yeah. at, you know, if it's just like, all right, who's the next guy in line by ranking? Yeah, it's Marab. I'm the champ. I want this. Let's see what happens. Um, I, I had a meeting with Dana recently and he said, he's going to announce something very big in a few weeks. And uh, I'll leave it at that. But I, I know what I want. And, uh, it's, you know, I want the biggest fights. And I want to make a lot of money. I want to do big pay-per-views. And uh, so that's that. And that, that kind of carries on to, to what I want next. So so you think Cheeto's the biggest fight? I mean, and obviously, Al Jermaine's out there. He said it needs to be me. If it's not me, then it's got to be Marab. I understand for you. Obviously, Cheeto's the only guy, and I know you contest a loss, and you say that you're undefeated, but Cheeto's the only guy. He's got the best storyline for a fight, but we'll get to that in a minute. I saw this video today, and I was laughing my ass off. Cue the tape, brother. Cue the tape. Yeah. <laughs> and you're commentating it. Did you really not know that this was Marav? No, I, I knew it was Marab. I guess I just didn't. I just oh, assumed maybe when I was making the video. I don't know why I didn't say that was Marab in the video. I just, I just, I was like, what the fuck this dude? I knew it was Marab, but I'm like, it was just so funny. He handed this guy his phone. It wasn't even someone he's with. I feel like he's asked someone, hey, will you hold this? And then he fucking took off his shirt and starts shadow boxing out in the rain. I'm like, this guy's a fucking dork. I like Marab, though. I think he's a, he's a funny little dude. He is a funny little dude. Have you seen that video as well? I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm not trying to fucking hate on Marab because he is a very likable guy. Uh, I think he's like jumps into like some snow or some ice and he yeah. dives in head first and the fucking ice is frozen or something and cuts all his face. Yeah, that it, it just shows his level of intelligence. Um, but again, I like Marab. I just, you don't jump into ice thinking it's water, but some hey, if you've never seen ice before, maybe you don't know the difference between solid water and regular water i don't know oh god here it is well done brian <laughs> <laughs> holy and shit then he gets out his head's all sore he's fucking Jesus. cut open and stuff oh yeah that that, video, I, that video was funny <laughs> yeah it makes yeah. it more funny that he didn't know yeah that's, that's no it great. does it does but he is a tough little bastard but he came uh, Very. So, so what do you think i mean obviously uh in your mind, so, so Cheeto, that's the one you want. That's that's the fight you're going after. Yeah, and let's make uh, let's make sure everyone knows. Like, I'm not going after Cheeto because he's the biggest name because he doesn't carry much of a draw. And no offense, like he's he might be a bigger name than like Marab or Corey, but Corey probably. If you want to look at someone how to not emulate your career or, or sell a fight or anything, like follow Corey. He'll do a great job at that. But the Cheeto fight, only the only reason the Cheeto fight is such a big deal is just because of that controversial fight um so that that's that's why that fight's big and uh you know chael did a poll yesterday it was fifty thousand people and and you know 52 percent or whatever it was you know wanted cheeto it's like we gotta give the people what they want yeah no i saw that and did Sahudo come in dead last he did it's so pathetic like the dude's coming off a loss over a guy i just knocked out it's just, and then he asking his friends, "Hey, what should I tweet that'll try to be funny?" It's just, it's not looking good for him. If I had any advice for him, I'd say, "Hey, just get off social media, and you might have more followers." I think when, every time he tweets, he gets less followers. It's like a stat I saw. Is that a guy that you're interested in fighting, or, or, do, you, or do you think he's had his time and just you forget about him and move on? The division now is on fire. It's the 
biggest spotlight it's ever had. Obviously, it's got the, the biggest star, and I'm not just saying that's kiss your ass, because you are a, a big, big deal, Sean, and you're going to bring a lot of spotlight to the bantamweight division. Mm. It's like, so who do in your mind, is he yesterday's news? He's like three weeks ago's news. He's just, I mean, not three weeks to be generous. He's just, yeah, he's just so, he's older now. He's shorter. He's just it's not, there's not much interest in that fight i mean you saw the poll he was dead last like people want to see me fight marab more than che- uh, henry it's just it's that's embarrassing so for cheeto to keep begging for that fight i mean he just looks dumb he, and if he does want it you know he'd be go go out there maybe go out there and beat marab um and that, that could be an option but yeah I, i've got a, i've got a couple of fights planned out you know you don't want to plan too far ahead but also you want to have a little path and, and some goals so i got some goals um and uh and henry's not really on that unless he goes and does something makes a name for himself um aljermaine sterling's out there saying listen i I defended the belt more times than anybody i deserve a rematch what are we saying cheeto probably in december at the t-mobile arena i mean i don't know if conor mcgregor's going to be on that card but if he's not they need someone with your kind of star power so i would assume that would be a a time where they're going to highlight Take Cheeto out of there. If that happens, then would would you give Aljo another shot? I ideally I go out there and I have to knock out uh, Cheeto. I can't go in a decision. I can't submit him. I can't make it. Bo- I got to go out there and knock out Cheeto, and then I'm gonna call out Gervonta. And I I know that fight sounds silly to a lot of people, but I go out there and knock out Cheeto. I I double and and start him. I am a massive star. But then again, it's like Javante's still not quite there. So maybe he needs to go. I think he's in jail, though. So I don't think anyone has told him that I want to fight him yet. Um, but if they do, you know, if he gets a fight, maybe wins a fight and, and becomes a bigger star, that's a fight I definitely want to uh, partake in. Well, that's going down the Conor McGregor route. Obviously, he did that with Mayweather. Made a shit ton of money. Davis is a big, he's a big name in boxing as well. Do you think that is something that is a reality? I mean, I'd love to see it. I think you do very, very well. The boxing's always stand out. Clearly, you've got power. You've always shown that. But the way you yeah. knocked out Aljo, I mean, it only only echoes that sentiment. But is that have you have you even broached that conversation with Dana or anybody? Yeah, I mean, and Floyd's not, and I, I hate to even bring that name, but Floyd's an option too. It's not just Gervonta. Floyd Floyd's willing to go out there and fight. You know, maybe he exhibition up- matches galore. Yeah. I'm I'm one to know. I mean, people always talk like, "Oh, you're trying to copy Connor." I had a I had a pro boxing fight before Connor even fought Floyd. I fucking love boxing. I've that's where I started doing was boxing. Um, obviously, I haven't just focused on boxing, so I'm not as good as I would have been if I've only boxed my whole life. But I'm very capable of uh, boxing. It's my favorite. You know, if if I yeah, bo- boxing's up there. But um. Well, what was the question? Sorry, fuck that. No, fuck knows. Who cares? Ooh. Who cares? Mm. Let's just t- let's just keep it on the good stuff, man. I mean, how good does it feel, right? For all those people that are close to you, because for me, when I won the belt, obviously it's a personal thing. You know what I mean? It's great. Yeah. You've achieved this incredible milestone that you forever can be proud of. And, you know, having the belt is something that will never go away. But for those people that were around me, my wife, my children, my close, close teammates, that close in a circle that always supported me, it was almost for me just as much for, for them. Do you know what I mean? Because they supported yeah. me. They knew I could do it. You know, I mean, I'm assuming it's a similar kind of thing for you. Just talk to me about that kind of things, please, Sean. Yeah, 100%. I mean, even like, yeah, Brandon, my strength conditioning coach after was like, that literally was probably the highlight of my life. Like him telling me that. Tim, you know, tearing up a bit in the yep. cage. And and then Danny, my girl, and my family in the octagon after, just seeing their, their expressions. Like, that. yeah, that makes it, that's 100% the best part of it all. Um, that and then inspiring people, inspiring people that are, you know, need help just to get going, but also inspiring people that are already successful, people that have already done massive things, that have already done big things and inspiring them to, to be like, damn, I can be, you know, bigger, I can be better, I, there's more to do. So I think, yeah, seeing the, the, the joy I brought to other people, the reaction videos I see on YouTube from random fans at the bar, at their house. It's that those are more fun for me to watch in the actual fight. Seeing people just lose their mind 
when I won. And then, yeah, everyone that supported me in my close inner circle, watching them it just be like amazed that something that I did is, is really, really cool. Oh, dude. Yeah, well, it's not really cool. It is inspirational. It'll go down in the history books. And how good did it feel that, listen, winning the belt, whichever way you can win the belt, is great. But to go out and get an emphatic knockout like that, come on, the icing on the cake. Yeah, it wouldn't, I mean... Uh, yeah, imagine a close out. decision that could have gone either way. Yeah, not even comparable. To win that fight by knockout is being... Uh, and knocking out a lot of people on the way up and a lot of the guys I knocked out weren't you could consider like oh they're past their prime or they're not that good that's just kind of the narrative I mean I look at Thomas Almeida as a really really good striker uh Eddie Wineland was more tough than skilled um Holly and Paiva is really good everywhere um so knocking out those guys that are decent but not the best people are gonna always say oh he's good at striking but he's knocking out people that are good to go out there and knock out Aljo that narrative is just like not there anymore. It's like, okay, mm. you know, and I, and I, the narrative of me never fighting even tough was there for a long time. Just look at my last two fights. Like I fought Peter Yawn and Aljamain Sterling. And I dropped them both. I technically dropped Peter in the second round. Didn't get him out of there. I dropped Peter in the second round, dropped and finished Aljo in the second round. Um, so, so my resume is going to be starting to build right now. When I said the sugar air started, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun next few years. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you go in just a second. But to your point, you're absolutely right. And if I think you navigated the waters perfectly, if I'm honest, you know, because, yeah, of course, okay, you can jump in there with a top contender straight away, but take your time. You know, you still yeah. – how, how old are you now, Sean? 28. You're still only 28 years old. So what was it, five years ago, six years ago when you were on the contender? 22? 2017, Yeah. Six years ago. Yeah. So you were 22. Yeah. Exactly. So why the fuck are you going to fight top guys? Learn. Learn your craft. Learn about your mind. Learn about the sport. Learn about how to yeah. train, how to recover. And as you go, gradually, gradually, gradually. And then you're absolutely right. Last time out, Piotr Jan, one of the toughest men in the division, a tremendous champion. You beat him fair and square. Then you knock this guy out. No one can say anything now. Yeah, do you still have have you had people come, I don't know, maybe in your DMs and say, you know what, Sean, I was wrong, my bad, or or do you not really experience many haters? Um, no, it's funny. I'll read like comments on like I'll watch your videos, Chails. Like I'll watch videos when they when my name's in the thumbnail. Hey, hey, listen, talking about I, I I I I thought I'll Joe, the rest of me oh, no, yeah. too much. Yeah, no, no, I, I did. I get it. I I did yeah. because he's I out re out wrestle Cejudo. And, and I, not, I didn't, hold didn't that, just I didn't out hold wrestling, that, made him look bad, made yeah. Sahuda look bad. And I thought, I respect Sean a lot. I like Sean a lot. I think you're awesome. And I've got so much respect, but I was like, stylistically, wrestlers are motherfuckers. Sorry, go on. No, yeah, you're a hundred percent right. I definitely didn't hold any, I, there was people that said, Oh, I was just going to kill him. Like there's not even close. And then there was people like, God, I like Sean. I just, you know, I think Aljo's going to be too much. And, and you can tell when someone really wants me to lose or when they're like, oh, I kind of want him to win, but I don't think he's going to. And I don't necessarily care either way. Like if people think I'm going to yeah, lose, yeah. it doesn't really – I don't hate them or anything. I I get it. No. Um, but, yeah, I'll read like comments on people's YouTube videos and they're like, holy shit, I, you know, I'm trying to hate Sean, but I just can't. I, I'm trying to not like him, but I can't. He's just – you know, he's as good as he said he is, you know. And I think a lot of the haters turn, turned uh, – fans on saturday but I, I i don't feel like i have too much haters to be honest which is a change from three four years ago because i'd say i want to be as big as connor i want to have massive fights and people were like you shut the fuck up like you're stupid you're annoying that's not gonna happen and now you know i was confident enough back then to say that on the contender series i said i'm gonna be a fucking superstar i'm going to be the man and i got a lot of shit for that but a lot of people that they love to hate on confident people because they're just not confident. And I get it. I, like I said, I don't hold any resentment against people that don't want to see me win. It's just, it feel, fuels me to go out there and just be better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, see, I've got to choose my words carefully, but like when I'm commentating, when we do the fighter meetings, we'll see new people walk in and they're, they're, they're young, dumb, they're full of cum. They're like, fucking, yeah. I'm here to be the Conor McGregor. I'm going to knock everyone yeah. fucking out and no one can touch me. And then sadly, you know, they get starched on, on fight night yeah. and all the rest of it. 
but there's nothing wrong if you firmly believe it and you do the work. You know, there's nothing. It, it takes. It's one thing to be young, dumb, ignorant, full of shit, and say that. But when you firmly yeah. believe it and you know you are that good, it takes a lot of confidence to actually say that. You know, so fair play yeah. to you, man. You made it happen. Yeah. I mean, we'll leave it there. Uh, this when you fight Cheeto Vera, if you fight Cheeto Vera, how's that from one end? What happens? Cheeto is very tough. He is very skilled. He's very durable. Um, I piece him up. I, I finished him. Uh, you go back and watch that first fight. He wasn't touching me. I was piecing him up. And, uh, you know, he landed the kick. He landed the lucky kick, and it went the way it went. But if that kick never got landed, this fight wouldn't be – it wouldn't be happening. Me versus Cheeto, if I went out there, finished him, beat him, boring fight, whatever happened other than what happened, me versus Cheeto too obviously isn't as big of a fight. So and the fact that it happened, it was almost – a you know, it was good. I, I'm, I'm glad that happened. It made my career play out the way it did, and I'm sitting here as the champ right now with a massive, massive rematch – while getting pay-per-view points. So for the fact that that played out the way it did, I'm pumped. And uh, me versus Cheeto 2 will be huge if that's what's next. If not, you know, that fight will happen eventually. Well, Sean, listen, you're in for one hell of a ride, man. You're 28 years old. You're the champion of the world. When I won the belt, I was at, right at the arse end of my career yeah, with, yeah. One, with one fucking eye. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I knew, like, this was just a drop in the ocean. But, brother, you've got a long long career ahead of you and you're going to have an incredible time. So enjoy every moment of it. I'm proud of you. Congratulations one more time. And thanks for your time today. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Peace. Talk soon. Yeah, indeed. There he is. He's gone. That's it.